good as ugly as things are sometimes, or as good as they look, it's just good to play against somebody else and see our with, with real officials. And, and uh, can't tell you whether I'm pleased or not observed. And I always reserve myself this time to watch the video at length so that we can just teach now and grow. And, and uh, so it will. It was uh, you know they have. Uh, Almost our whole team back from last year that is, is growing too, and they were very solid defensively. And our kids learned that I don't care who you're playing, you got to execute, the ball can't stick, you got to move. So our 90 points was created by turnovers. It was not created as much in half court offense. We got to get better in our half court offense. Ethan, you want to start us off? Uh, John, what went into the decision to start Iggy, and what did you see from Yeah, it, you know, we went through most of our preseason. Uh, Isaiah Livers was not able to practice a lot. So we got into a rhythm, and then all of a sudden he was there like one week beforehand, and we just stuck with him. And he really, in our scrimmage and everything like that, as a sixth man, I, I wanted tr him to transcend to the three man as well. And so as a sixth man, I, I wanted to learn all the positions. And so um, it's, and he's played really with our leading scorer, leading rebounder in Europe. He's a pretty good player. And uh, Isaiah is a team guy, and he'll he'll fill that role well. But that's just for this. We'll wait and see what happens Tuesday. That'll probably Josh. My answer, my question was kind of already answered. But um, how do you think Isaiah kind of responded to that role change? You know, due to, due to I mean, he, the same way he did last year. You know, when he was virtually at the end, he was a starter in name only, and we get Duncan in there, and then he he fill his role. So he may play more minutes. I think in our scrimmage he might have played more minutes than anybody in the in the scrimmage. So he gives us he gives us this, you know, uh, presence defensively, et cetera, where he's talking, he's doing some things. Uh, but we also have other needs on offense that I thought we needed to fill with Iggy. Right down in front over here. Coach Bilet, um, I know tonight's game was a blowout, but is there anything you want your team to improve on before you play Norfolk State opening night? Yeah, game I, I want to see the video more why there were so many offensive rebounds, and, and some of them were just like the ball was just it was funky. The ball was rolling all over the place, but we we have to be you know we got to get 50-50s better, and I, I blame that on myself. I blame that our scout team does not crash the boards as hard as the Big Ten will. And I got to get them to do that. So there's a lot of things, you know, that we have to clean up. I, I didn't like the number of extra possessions. I do like that a three-point shooting team only got what 11 threes or 13 threes off, uh, and one of them was, uh, or one of their makes was when we had gone to the deep bench where our guys are still learning to play. So um, that would probably be one of the other things. And then the ball stuck several times today, and that's always going to happen. It's always going to happen. We just got to do it less and less every game. Here with Jacob. Um, what do you think is the next step for Indiana offense? For Iggy? Yeah. I, I think probably get comfortable with all the calls that are coming his way. And that's another, you know, he'll play both positions. But, you know, he's got, you know, I, I hated it when we, I think we had a foul call and he, he hit a three. And, you know, we, we just, he, he can shoot the ball really well. But, you know, I think we just got to make him in games and become that real triple threat player because. When he goes downhill, he's hard. To, he's ambidextrous. Either hand, he's going to finish with either hand. So the next step is to slow down, have the threat of a jump shot, which he really has. Uh, he just hasn't done it yet in any of these games, anybody he's seen. Chris, some assists for Jordan. Is that a pretty good start? Which yeah, is? it is. He, he's he's growing in some areas, and uh, you know, he what he's really been receptive is being coached up here, but he'll still. He'll go to what, I don't want him to lose this hunting mentality. I don't want Charles to stop hunting. I don't want Iggy to stop hunting. Those are three, like, primary hunters. But they got to learn when, when okay, this is not this is not going to work. Just move the ball. And so, um, but I did like that with him getting those type of assists. Overall, our assists, Xavier obviously was good. Xavier had a bunch of steals. And then Teske's three, is that something he's got to Yeah, we, yeah, we, we, we want him to shoot those. We do want him to shoot those. So, uh, yeah, I thought John was just okay today. John's... John's Got to rebound the ball better than he's rebounded, and he's, he can't. You got to be more assertive. He's not a backup center anymore, and he played like a backup center a couple times, and that's that's not the role he's got to have. Over there with Andrew, coach. When you do when you do watch the tape, what what are some things that are sort of opponent 
independent, dependent, that independent. I guess that you know don't don't matter that you can look from your team to see whether it was good or bad, regardless of what they were doing. Well, the one would be boxing out, and I mean, are we really making an attempt at? We had two illegal box outs, so those are things we're going to have. Did we, did were did it? Does it look to it though you can't hear it? What was our communication like with things? I mean, we did hold them to some points, and they had some. They figured ways to score some points at different times, and then offensively, I don't care your garden. You know, they, they did some different things with the ball screen, and all of a sudden it was my turn and my turn. And I don't think we hardly scored ever when somebody said, "Okay, they did this, and I'll just move the ball ahead and we cross and so I'm going to make my own." I don't think we ever scored at all. And we had four charges in the first half, four. Where that's those are things that and I don't care who you're playing, you just can't drive by, drive into people. Stay there with Zach. John, what you mentioned the half court offense weren't necessarily happy with it very much tonight. What is there a commonality, a common theme that maybe it wasn't working the way you were hoping? Yeah, I think that um, I watch video more. We got to cut harder. We got to set better screens. We got to throw better passes. So I, I basically sit there and watch the video or watch the game, and then I said, "All right, I, I know I'm going to see that tomorrow," and then we teach from it. But that's just the ball's just got to be got to move a little bit better than it did today. And we scored 90 points, but I said it wasn't. It was a whole bunch of, you know, nobody's got good transition defense for a turnover, and they turned it over, you know, 16 times or something. Back over here with Ethan. Coach, was there any particular region reason you scheduled uh, Northwood? Could have scheduled anybody? Do they run sets you like to see? Or? No, it was. Uh, we've tried to. Uh, yesterday, I answered this question that, you know, we've, with the exception of bringing Kazi Russell back. Uh, repaying Lemoyne for for when they played and, and made a slippery rock game. We stayed in state and we've tr we've tried to play a lot of different people. I think the only one we played twice maybe is Wayne. So we had never played North with a good program. One of my former um, managers is assistant up there. They had almost everybody back but one guy. So it was it, would, it was just seemed to be a good matchup. Back in front with Josh. Were you happy with the amount of three pointers your team shot today? Yeah, you know that's gonna. We'll probably diminish that. I said that when we were 0 for 5 or something the first half till Eli hit that. I said, you know, we were taking 12 by now last year. So yeah, I don't think you're gonna see as much. But we got some guys with really quick first steps. So, uh, but at the same time, we come, came out with good numbers. So um, we, we wanna we, we're gonna continue to grow in those areas without question. We've been really shooting well in practice, but. We still, the volume guys, we don't have the volume guys we've had. And, and I, I said before, Muhammad was never a volume guy. It took him years to acquire that trait, where Duncan came out of the womb shoot, and Mo did as well. So we, none of these guys that we have except Jordan Poole probably had that mentality walking in. And uh, we just got to, as they, as they learn the game and learn what's a good shot for them, there's also, it's got to be a good shot for Michigan. We got time for a couple more. We'll go with Tao. Uh, John, you talked about wanting uh, John Teske to be more assertive. Yeah. How, how do you balance that with also wanting him to stay out of foul trouble? Because he had three fouls pretty yeah. much today. Yeah. He, uh, but his, his, some of his fouls are like just ones of posture and stance. You know. Um, so, um, I, I, but he's, he's the thing we really have to work with him and Austin right now. Is they got, they got to play bigger than they're playing off the backboard. And they know it. They absolutely know it. And they got to play bigger than that. We're, we can't. We can't exist in the Big Ten, right? If our, our, our they're not getting more. A little bit like when Mo was younger as well, right? We just got to find it. And all of a sudden, Mo found the knack for it. We got to make sure that happens. But he, I, I think he'll, he's learning what's a foul. What it, 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 or, uh, uh, Austin has the exact same issue, right? Of what, how to have verticality, how to be aggressive without fouling. Chris, you want to close this up? Which one of Eli's minutes tonight? He's just solid. I mean, he was just solid. And he's, he's had a, a good camp. He had a good summer. He's just solid. I can just count on him to, to, to play probably more like a junior would play, even though because he, he just really picks up things very quickly. And that's been really helpful. Because Davis really had some good, minute, good minutes in practice as well. But Eli right now is a better choice for us to be the first guard off the bench because he just makes us better, just like he did last year at the beginning of the year. All right, let's go. Go blue. Let's beat Penn State.